Hey, hey, Father Michael here. First of all, I want to say thanks to all those who kind of supported me and <clears throat> reached out to me yesterday. Rush yesterday was a rough day, but I already knew that going into it. But the sun is shining today, and I'm good. So thank you. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 seems appropriate here. This is Jesus uh, speaking to St. Paul in a vision, and Jesus says, My grace is sufficient for you, for in, uh, in your weakness is my power made perfect. And Paul writes, Therefore, I will boast about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. About 10 years ago, <clears throat> while having a routine phone conversation with my father, uh, he lived like seven hours away, and, you know, um, old people sometimes get in this loop of <laughs> complaining about stuff all the time. God, I hope that doesn't happen to me. But I see it all the time. So, you know, <laughs> I would call, you know, like every couple of weeks, <laughs> get up my courage because I knew I was going to hear the same list of complaints and physical ailments and everything that was not good. As some people are always quick to point out the half empty glass and never mind the half full part. Anyway, so the usual, how are you? <laughs> always resulted in a blow-by-blow, blow, detailed, meticulous description of every single ailment from stem to stern, with that underlying foregone conclusion, you know, that life was just a struggle, and he was just doing the best he could, and all of that, you know? God, that is exhausting to listen to, especially when you know going into it that you're going to have to listen to it again. But sometimes that's the price for being uh, a decent son and a decent human, uh, you know, asking questions that, that we don't even want answers to because we have already heard it. So we're going through this conversation in the usual way, the usual rundown, and you know, I'm I'm never one to dismiss someone's uh, complaints about physical pain, uh, but it's hard to take someone seriously, someone who is you know twice the weight he's supposed to be, and who is still having bacon and eggs and fried potatoes like every day for breakfast, <laughs> and a cholesterol of four twenty five when he finally got bullied uh, to going in to see the doctor. So, you know, sympathy is, it runs a little thin there. But on that particular day, we're going through the usual list of physical ailments. And I'm trying to pay, pay attention to him. I'm trying to be an active listener, you know. And all of a sudden, like he says in the middle of a sentence, well, you know, Maybe related to that time when I had 10 inches of my colon removed. <coughs> Stop the car. Back up. What did you just say? And he said it again. What do you mean you had 10 inches of colon removed? And you never told anyone and it wasn't cancerous? but it was precancerous. What? We have to know these things. He said, well, you know, I didn't want anyone to worry about me. Bro. <laughs> Bro, you love the sympathy. <laughs> so I don't even know what was really going on there. But like I told him, well, dang, now this changes everything. Now I have to go and get a freaking colonoscopy. 
Now, to be clear, I had done the poop on a stick routine several times already prior to that because I have known people to die of colon cancer and this guy would rather not go out of this world by that way. You know, I will poop on a stick all day, every day for you. But I didn't have any family uh, history of anything, you know, in that area of the body. But now I do. So now I have to go do it. I had already taken my spouse to do that procedure. So I had seen firsthand the process, the preparatory process, which is delightful, as well as the aftermath when the drugs literally rob you of basically 95% of your IQ points. Oh my God, <laughs> all day, all day afterwards, the same questions. Did the doctor ever come in? Did the doctor ever come in? Hey, you forgot to tell me, did the doctor ever come in? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I was like, I cannot end up like this. I cannot do that, like, horrendous drink, you know, a 55-gallon drum of Gatorade the night before and be mentally gone for 24 hours afterwards. There's got to be a better way, right? So I decided to see. Look online. This is what we do. What are some ways to maybe simplify and make this whole colonoscopy adventure better? Thank God for Google. Because there are a lot of people out there, God love them, who really are putting up some pretty decent advice on how to deal with things, and including the colonoscopy adventure and tips for the prep work the night before. And I learned something reading these, uh, you know, these uh, bits of advice online. I learned that if I stopped eating solid food three days prior and only consumed liquid protein shakes, that would make that drinking 55-gallon drum of Gatorade <laughs> the night before, I could probably reduce that amount to maybe only five gallons. And it would make the whole process go better. So after careful consideration, and I took some notes and all of that, I ended up drinking only about one-third of the nasty Gatorade cucumber flavor. I don't even know what I was thinking at the time. Don't buy that. And I did it, right? It worked out fine. And I also found a lot of testimonials from people who, like me, did not want to be brain dead for 24 hours following the procedure. And so they did it without any medication. So now I'm thinking about this. I'm still teaching, so I've got to take a day off in the middle of the week to do this thing, right? And one person wrote, and I'll never forget this, and he said, you will feel like a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but you won't pop. <laughs> and that stuck with me. And so I decided based largely on that comment about the Macy's Parade balloons, that I would do the procedure myself without any medication, and that I was going to arrange this on a day when the weather was going to be perfect so that I could have a decent day off of school and maybe spend the day golfing. So, there I go. I go to the hospital to have the procedure done. The medical staff is like, Bro, come on now. We're going to hook you up with some meds. And I'm like, nope, 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 I'm good. Nope, not going to happen. Nope. They did insist on putting in a pick line in my hand, just, you know, in case you change your mind during the procedure. And I assured them, mm -mm, not going to happen. 
I have a high pain threshold. I'm not going to change my mind because, hello, it's going to be 72 freaking degrees today. And this guy has a golf date <laughs> with my friend Dave, uh, who is the guy uh, who is the designated driver because they won't let you drive home um, after the procedure because, like I said, you are mentally missing in action afterwards. So, time and again, they tried to you know, get me to take something. And I was like, I literally do not want anything. So, there we go. We go into the, the room with, uh, you know, the 200-foot fire hose and, and the adventure begins. My, my grand tour of the inner Grand Canyon. And I'm watching the whole thing, like, up close. I'm maybe 18 inches from this 42-inch uh, flat-screen HD TV. I'm watching the whole adventure. And it turns out that that guy who posted the comment about the Macy's Parade balloon, bro, that is spot on. That is exactly how that feels. Wow. Wow. 20 minutes into this procedure, just when I'm beginning to think, oh my God, maybe I should ask for something because we're getting awfully full up in here. Just then, the doctor said, do you see this little scar here? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he said, that's where your appendix burst at some point. You don't have one. And we'll be backing out now. Thank you, God. And so we began that long <laughs> journey back to the surface of the earth. And it turns out, that I had done the entire procedure in less than 25 minutes, completely stone sober. And although my golf game that day, I'm pretty sure still sucked. I don't even remember. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I had a great day off in the 72 degree sunshine. So what is the point of all this? goes back to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. My grace is sufficient for you because my strength, my power is made manifest in your weakness. Jesus is speaking and reassuring and guiding Paul in this vision, telling him that God's grace is sufficient to whatever it is that we are going through. I learned that again firsthand yesterday with all the people who reached out to me. But here's the thing. Sometimes that grace of God, in fact, I would say 99% of the time, that comes in unexpected ways through other people. Someone says something or does something or guides us or has an insight for us that really makes a difference and lets us take a breath and just keep doing it. Just keep doing this thing called life. It might be a little bit of friendly uh, medical advice, uh, how to get through a colonoscopy with your wits still intact. It might be um, a smile to random shoppers at the Kroger store. Maybe a word of encouragement to someone who is going through something that we have already been through. This is why former addicts uh, have a lot of credibility with people struggling to overcome their own addictions. We know how this whole thing goes. So, God is always by our side. God is always within us. But God is also quite prone to using other people to reveal the divine presence. And whenever we choose to just trust God a little bit more, 
we can be sure that the Spirit of God is going to inspire us to helping other people wherever we are. We don't have to go on a mission trip. This whole world, this whole life that we're living is one succession of opportunities to help others after another. No matter what, no matter where we are. This is how we live out our faith in God. Confident that God always, always hears our prayers, but equally confident that sometimes, as often as we receive answers to our prayers through other people, we can be absolutely 100% positive that we, at every moment during every day, have the potential to be the answer to someone else's prayers. So, get your damn colonoscopy, number one. Number two, be a little bit better today than you were yesterday. We are the light of God. We are the salt of the earth. We are the presence of God. Let's do this. Let's help each other out. Please pray with me. Mighty, healing God. We open our hearts and our minds to your divine, transfiguring presence in this moment of prayer. Grateful for all the times, all the times you have stood by our side, for all the times you have used other people to reveal the truth of your presence. Help us today to choose hope, to choose trust, to choose openness to being called by your Holy Spirit. Show us today how we might help someone else who is struggling. Show us today that we can be the answer to someone else's prayers. Amen. And now may the God of peace, the God who is always trying to get your attention, be with you today and with all those you love. The blessing of our mighty God, Otsa, Yisinu, Yisviatomoduhu. Have a blessed day.